I'm going to show you how to recreate this reel of Devin Yatho, and it will include some really cool style elements, so I'm really excited for it. I think his new style is really cool, and I'm actually going to do a deep dive on this new style. And if you want to see this, then join the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description. You also get to know how to get more clients. You will get custom plugins and, of course, a pro community that really wants to help out. Now let's jump into it. Let's go through the animation first. As you can see, first, this really cool slot machine effect. This slot machine will explode into particles. And of course, I'm gonna do everything without any plugins. Then some text animation and some more text animation. This is a bit more simple. And then this really cool real transition where all his reels come into place. It will scroll down, then zoom into this reel, highlight the amount of views, and it will go to another reel. And that's it. And of course, drop a comment if you want to see the next part. First, I'm gonna import a short. I'm gonna right click a transform and fit to comp to make it the same size as a composition. Composition I created is just a standard social media portrait HD preset. And this is just so we have a background. Now I'm first gonna type a text here, viral glitch, enter, enter, formula. Let's select it, make it white for now, and let's scale that up. Now I would prefer a different font. Maybe we can even do it with this font actually. I'm gonna change it to all caps, and I'm gonna change the bottom one, so select it and set it to medium. And I'm also increasing the line height so there's a bit more distance between it. There we go. Select our layer and center it. And I'm gonna select the part viral and change the color of this. There we go. Now we could already stylize it, but we can also do that later. If you want to stylize it, you can just add a normal glow, a VR glow or a deep glow, whatever you prefer. Now let's move our canvas by holding space and clicking around. And now let's create the slot machine. I'm gonna do that by just going to the rectangle tool. I'm gonna set the fill to black, okay? And set the stroke to white, okay? And maybe four pixels should work. And I'm just gonna drag this like this and then maybe something like this. And let's center this too. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna turn off the fill to none and I'm gonna change the size and if you don't see the size upgrade your After Effects or just open your shape layer I like to do it in the shape properties so unlink this and then just drag it to the center something like this that works now I also want to make it a bit transparent I'm gonna do that by going into the bottom shape going into the rectangle and into the fill and then changing the opacity a bit so it's a bit transparent not too much something like this it's a cool effect right now we can also add a gradient to this if you want to by changing the fill to a gradient. But I think this is actually quite cool. Now let's add the inside of our slot machine. And for this, I'm gonna use this free icon. And by the way, if you want to download all the assets that I'm using for free, then just join the free community. Link is in the description down below. If you want to have the full project file, that's available to the Social Creator Club Pro community. Now let's make the numbers first. I'm just gonna click on the text tool and I'm gonna type. I'm just gonna set seven, enter, enter, five, four, three. Now I'm gonna align it a bit. Let's put the number three already there. I'm gonna change the color to white and I'm gonna increase the line height a bit. So there's a bit more space between it. Maybe something like this should work. Yeah, this should work. Let's set it somewhere around here. There we go. Now I'm gonna duplicate this by just pressing Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows. Moving this over while holding Shift. And then we have our second row. Now what I'm gonna do is probably maybe change this four out remove that and then maybe adding a six and then duplicating it again moving it out to the right and then maybe i'm gonna remove the six too there we go that's cool now let's add our berry i might need to scale it a bit so press s for scale let's scale this down a bit and let's move this to the place where normally a number would be and we need to do this a couple times so i'm just gonna duplicate this move it duplicate this move it and duplicate this move it i like to move it move it now you should have something like this let's make sure that the numbers are above our slot machine itself so i'm just gonna grab our two shapes that we created earlier and move these down there we go now you might notice all the numbers are visible but we're gonna do something about this I'm just gonna create a layer new solid. The color doesn't matter, just press okay. Then go into the rectangle. Let's turn the solid off and let's drag a rectangle and make sure that there's a bit of room at the top and bottom of the slot machine. Now for now we can turn it back on so we can see what we're doing. This is gonna be our mask, so we're gonna basically use this as a mask. Now what I'm gonna do is press F for feather, so it's basically a bit more smooth, maybe something like this. That should work. Maybe I'm even gonna double click on it and move it a bit closer, something like that. 
Perfect. Now let's collapse this, select all of our layers, select our numbers and the cherry icons, go to toggle switches modes, and then drag this pick whip icon off the track mat to the white solid. There we go. And, and as you can see, it's now masked. Now what I'm gonna do is link the cherries to the correct number row. So for example, we have this first row. I'm gonna just make sure that this is above it. And I'm also gonna make sure that this is parented to it. So I'm just gonna link it. There we go. I'm gonna do the same with the other ones. And this might've been easier when they were still visible, but I can still see it when I select it. So let's just parent this one to the second one. And then we should still have two cherries and let's link that one to our last one. Make sure to use the last pick whip tool. So this one. And why this is important is when we're gonna move our text, we need to make sure that these are linked to it. So the cherries will move with it. And we already see the effect happening a bit here. That's really cool. Now I'm gonna select the text layers, press P for position to see all of our text layers, set a keyframe, then let's go a bit further and let's move them all together to the last number 777. Let's move this a bit like this. And if we now play this, this is already really cool, but this is not the effect that we want. We want a bit of offset. So I'm first gonna select all of our keyframes, hit F9 or right click and keyframe assistant easy ease. And what I'm gonna do is offset them a bit. So for example, the second one, I'm gonna move a bit maybe, and then this one also. And if we now play it, there should be some more, maybe changing the first keyframe to a bit. So it looks a bit more random as they start. That's perfect. Let's go to toggle switches modes and make sure the motion blur is set on, on all of our layers. And there we go, we already have our slot machine effect. Now, of course, we can change the color of the text. We can also add a glow, but we can also do that later on. I always prefer to do that at the end. So let's go to the next part where this breaks into particles. Such a cool effect, right? Now, the easiest way to continue, I'm just gonna drag this viral glitch formula down. I'm just gonna select our shape of the slot machine and all of the layers above. And then I'm gonna go to layer pre-compose and call this slot machine. So we just have one layer that we can work with. As you can see, this is our slot machine. It's perfect. Now, once it's at seven, I'm gonna split our layer. And you do this by going to edit split layer or command shift D or control shift D on Windows. I'm gonna use the shadow, which is under simulation. So I'm just gonna double click this. And you'll see this brick wall. And the first thing I'm gonna do is move this point. So you have these almost like a crosshair. We can move this down. And you need to move the second one too. There we go. Then we're gonna go to force one. May the force be with you. And then set the radius to zero. This will basically reset our effect. And I'm just gonna keyframe it. We'll move one frame forward and I'm gonna set it to two. Let's play this. It's already a cool effect as you can see. Now I'm just gonna go into shape change these bricks. You can choose anything you want. I'm just gonna go with squares for now. Then adding the repetition to make sure that this is really tiny, something like this. Maybe even change the direction so it looks a bit more random. Now, if you're changing the view to rendered, we will see what happens. So if I'm gonna go through it frame by frame, you will see that it will basically break into pieces, which is a really cool effect. You can also see that it's 3D. We don't have to use that. It is actually a really cool effect. If you don't want that, you can just go into the extrusion depth, set that to zero. And then we just have these flat surfaces. It will also render quicker because it doesn't have to render like 3D objects. And this is already really cool. Of course, we can play around with the gravity and like all these different parameters. But for now, I'm just gonna go to blur and I'm gonna use a Gaussian blur on this layer. And then I'm just gonna set a keyframe and make sure a couple of frames further, they're just really blurred. Maybe even fully, maybe something like this. And we can also just fade it out by pressing T for transparency and making sure that this will be faded out from 100 to zero. Let's play this back, maybe a bit too quick. Let's move this out a bit. There we go. And we have our particle effect. I think this is such a cool effect that you can apply on anything. Now let's continue. We'll have this next effect and this one is actually really easy to make. I'm just gonna turn this text off for now. We can also cut it off if we want, but for now I'm just gonna go to the next effect and that's typing a viral equals. Let's move this a bit. Let's duplicate this, move this to the top, top text, bottom text. And I'm just gonna select them both, 
Make sure that this font is a bit more thin. Maybe also make it a bit more, a bit smaller, something like that. In a bit, we can scale everything down a bit too. Let's move this. And I'm also gonna decrease the line height, something like this. Let's move this here. Here we go. I'm gonna create a line by going into the pen tool, make sure the stroke is on, make sure the fill is off. Let's zoom in a bit. I'm just gonna drag a line, click here, hold shift, click here. We have our line, that's cool. And to animate the line, I'm just gonna open it Add a trim paths, set a keyframe for the end, going a bit more to the front and setting it to zero. I'm just gonna drag this down so this is next to our text. And for the rest of the animation, I'm just gonna select these both, go to toggle switches mode and just parent them to the viral. Now we can animate the viral to make sure that this is first in the beginning, like it's in the middle. I'm just gonna make sure this animation is a bit further, something like this. There we go. We're gonna, of course, press S for scale and also Maybe even scale it up a bit, something like this. And then when it goes here, it scales down. So everything is a bit smaller. Press P for position. Make sure this keyframe is at the same position. And let's move it a bit, something like this. Now, of course, it also fades in. And we do that by just adding an opacity. And this happens really quick. So at the beginning, we'll just go from 0 to 100 real quick. And the top and bottom text actually also fades in by just setting a keyframe for the opacity, pressing T for the opacity, I make it fade in. And when I looked at the animation, I think there's also a small scale. So basically it will scale from the top to the bottom. And you do this by going to S for scale, unlinking this, setting a keyframe. Let's move this a bit and make sure the second value is skewed a bit. And this again happens really quick. And maybe I'm gonna easy ease some keyframes, but the most important thing is to set the motion blur on because everything happens so quick and there's motion blur, you don't really see it. If we then play it, as you can see, it's already a really cool animation. That's dope. Now again, we can change the keyframes a bit and easy ease them. I'm gonna keep it for now. Let's check the next part. Here we see, don't believe me. Basically the text fades in, but also is a bit blurry at the beginning. Now you can just use the standard preset for this and it's called blur fade on. So for example, if I type a text here, type a text here, and I go to effects and presets and I type blur and fade in, or we can also use the blur in by word, which actually already blurs in by word. I might adjust it a bit, so let's open it. Let's open the text, open the blur in by word animator, going into the range and going into advanced and then decreasing the blur a bit. I'm gonna unlink it and maybe setting it to 30 by 30. That way it's a bit more smooth and that looks fantastic. I think that's such a cool effect. Of course, we can change the keyframe so it happens a bit more quick. Drag these out a bit. There we go. Let's play this. And that's really cool. This is the same effect with the text, except now we have these screenshots in the background. And this is where it gets exciting. Now, of course, there's multiple ways to do this. We can or take a screenshot of this full page and then separate all of the images because we do need to animate them separately. In my opinion, the quickest way is to just take screenshots of these separate, which I'm gonna do now. And the last one, there we go. Now I have all my screenshots imported. Let's turn off the layers that we just created. So we have a blank space to work with. I'm gonna select them all and just drag them to my canvas. And now I'm gonna show you a secret trick. I'm gonna go to layer, new, null object. I'm gonna add a slider control to this, actually two times. So we have two slider controls. One we call columns and the other one we call rows. And you do this by just hitting enter on this. And now we're gonna use a expression code. And that's this one. And this is especially created for this tutorial. And of course I put this in the paid community, but not only that, also in the free community. So do join that too. I'm just gonna copy this over. And before copying it, make sure that the cell width and cell height is somewhat the same as your screenshot. Your screenshot might be different. Mine is, for example, 295 by 45. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be somewhat similar. Now, when you copy the code, we can just open one of our layers, alt click on position and paste it in here. You might get an error. This just means that we didn't set our columns and rows yet. We need to set our columns and rows and we need to rename our null. So hit enter on the null and call this controller. Hit enter, there we go. And as you can see, something already happened. What we now just have to do is copy the positions. So selecting position, control C or command C on Mac, selecting all of our screenshots 
and pasting that. And we have our grid. Now, if I zoom out, as you can see, it automatically creates a grid, which is really cool. Not only that, if we want to reorder this, for example, move the first one to the second one, it will automatically move. Now, the only thing I want to do now is also link all the layers to our controller so we can move this around. There we go. We can also scale it a bit, making sure it's fully covered. And then I'm just gonna go to layer, new, solid, set the color to black, okay, okay. So we fill basically our background. And now it's time to animate. And the easiest to do this is to, for example, just select the first six, press P for position, set a keyframe, going a couple frames before that. And then we can just move them anywhere we want. We can, for example, move this one to the left, maybe this one to the top, holding shift, this one to the right, holding shift. Then maybe this one also from the top, maybe this one from the left, this one also from the left. Same with these. So what happens now if I play it, as you can see, you have these animations. Now it's not smooth at all. Of course, we need to select all of our keyframes and hitting F9 or right click easy ease. And of course we need to add motion blur. Now if I play this, we already have this really cool animation. Now, of course, we also need some camera movements in this. And I'm just going to do that by going into our null that we created. And we can just set a keyframe on our scale and set a keyframe on our position. Press U to see all of our keyframes moving these out a bit. And then maybe scaling it up first. So like it's so maybe zoomed in a bit, maybe something like this. And then it will zoom out. And in the meantime, after this, I also just wanted to animate to the bottom. So there's a bit more movement, you know, something like this. Now this goes way too quick, I already know. So I need to drag this out a bit and let's animate the other images too. Let's just go to a bit further, selecting these, pressing P for position, setting a keyframe, going a bit to the front and then maybe moving this to the left. And this doesn't have to be perfect. After a while, you can also just keep them as long as that first part is, is just done, you know, that they animate in. Then I'm gonna select all of our screenshots, adding motion blur, there we go. That's already cool. Now, I also want to easy ease our keyframes of our null. And I'm also gonna zoom it in a bit more. I'm gonna drag this out a bit, going into the graph editor. That's already really dope. There we go. Now, of course, we need to zoom in now. I'm just gonna do that by going to layer, new, null object. Again, making sure this null object is below these screenshots, maybe above our controller, by the way, it doesn't really matter. And what I can then do is move this null object to, for example, if we want to put it on the right one, it doesn't really matter. Let's put it on this 163, for example. And let's link the controller to this new null object. And now we can animate this by pressing S for scale and it will scale exactly to this point. So if you now zoom it in, as you can see, it will zoom in exactly on this text layer. Of course, easy ease this like always by hitting F9. So now we'll zoom in, as you can see, really quickly, there we go. But I also want to highlight this. But before I do that, I'm just gonna select all of our layers, go to layer, pre-compose, call this Instagram, grid now to highlight this i'm just gonna go into layer new solid make sure it's black set the transparency or the opacity by hitting t and dragging that down a bit something like this we can keyframe this setting it to zero and then to 100 percent and then i'm just gonna mask this by going into the rectangle tool we can just mask this part set the mask to subtract hitting f for feather so this is really feathered and it will look like this. So it zooms in and then you got something like this. Do let me know if you want to see a part two and do join the Social Creator Club Pro. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. Then I want to thank you all for all the support and then I'll see you next time. Bye.